Welcome to Dassault System 3D Experience Forum North America. I'm Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst of Futurum Research, and I am here met with another analyst who's on site, Jim Brown. Jim is the president of Tech Clarity. Did I get that right? You did. You did. All right. Well, welcome to the hot seat. I'll be <laughs> honest. I wasn't calling it the hot seat before, but now but that now I'm we're going to do it. Analyst to analyst, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna grill you. All right, okay. we're gonna like have plan. we're gonna have a good conversation though. I always like getting the um, you know the objective third party, which that's what we do as analysts yeah. here. And um, so we're gonna talk about platforms, but real quick before just introduce me to your firm. Sure. Almost as if I never talked to you before. <laughs> Almost, we'll pretend. Um, so Tech Clarity, um, Tech Clarity, the idea behind it is making the business value of technology clear. Um, what we find is that um, businesses need to understand not just what technology does, but how does it fit into their business. For something like a platform, you know, it's, it's important to understand what a platform is, how it works, and maybe some of the technology behind it, but it's more important to understand what's it going to do for you, right? Is it going to help you make more money? Um, people like that. That's a good thing for a business, right? Uh, so Let's we try to tie those together. <laughs> Let's start there. Um, innovation platform isn't necessarily a word we hear a lot. We hear a lot about innovation. Right. But I don't know that every business fully recognizes that there are softwares or technologies or platforms that are truly designed to enable innovation. Why should companies, why do you think companies should be uh, looking at innovation platforms as part of the, the core of their businesses? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And, and I, think, I think you have to broaden the picture a little bit and not look at the platform, but look, about what, look at about what's happening in industry right now across, you know, across manufacturing and other industries. We're seeing this trend towards digitalization. You know, people are trying to become a digital enterprise, a digital business, um, in order to innovate more, uh, get things to market faster, be more intimate with their customers. Those are some of the drivers that we see people really focusing on as a business. The innovation platform is more of a mechanism to get them there. Um, what we see is it's very hard to be a digital business when you've got chopped up little systems with a little bit of data here, a little bit of data there. Oftentimes it's not even digital, it's in a, you know, a document or a spreadsheet or in, in, uh, you know, in, the, in the manufacturing industry, a lot of it's in engineering CAD files you know, or an eCAD file. You can't get at anything and it's not cohesive. So if you really want to get to the point where you are more of a digital business, you can innovate rapidly, serve customers, you need something different and the innovation platform is really the, the right way to go with that. So how do you... So say you're working with a manufacturer, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you're kind of in between. You're in between the platform, the companies that develop the platforms and probably uh, providing guidance to, to technology and business leaders sure. inside of these manufacturers. So the idea is great, what right. you just said, right? It tie, let's tie everything together, make it real simple. But we all know, if you're in from tech long enough, that simple is the, is the luxury. It's the right. most expensive luxury. Right. And so a lot of companies are sitting there going, great, I, I want an innovation platform. Where do I start? Yeah, well, and that's, and that's the thing. Um, when you start to look at telling somebody you need to have a, a, a business that's integrated from end to end, you know, pick an end to start from or start from the middle. You can't just go and, you know, snap your fingers and say, I have that now. Um, you can't change a business that fast, let alone the technology underneath it. So really what, uh, what we talk to companies about is from a digitalization perspective, there's some key areas you can focus on. One of them is R&D. All right, you know, it's a big part of innovation. How can I get everybody working on, for example, a cohesive view of a product, right? Instead of having one person working on the mechanical element and somebody else over here working on an electrical element and somebody over here working on the software, or if it's a process industry thing, you know, someone working on the formulation and somebody over here working on the packaging, right? Instead, let's get a cohesive model of the product, um, a digital twin, if you will, and start to all work together. That's a, that's a much more bite-sized chunk to start on. Or you could start on just the transfer to manufacturing. Um, you know, you've, you've got some digital information, a digital product model. How can I get that out to the plant floor quickly? How can I you know, spin up machines quickly, maybe 
um, send some specs over, do, uh, do some simulation of what the product on the product line will look like. But you can't, you know, you can't just make all of that happen at once. Um, you, have to, you do have to pick and choose. So from a roadmap standpoint then, a lot of times the question is, you know, I start where? So, you know, because kind of what I just heard you say, so you've got digital thread, silos, right? right? You're tying all the silos together, and then you have digital twin. Right. How do we mock something up? Right. And uh, pardon me for, the, you know, using this terminology, but fail fast or succeed soon, sure. right? Um, you've got, you know, the data analytics, sensors side of right. things. And, and, and I love the idea of start small, because I, I, I give that same talk, yeah. right? That's my talk track too. But so, so as a guy in the market that's been, been doing this a little while and been and talking innovation platforms, have you seen any patterns in where companies are starting? Like, cause you kind of gave us a, a Chinese menu there. Yeah. When you say pick something small, maybe an example or two of where you've seen it work yeah. well. No, exactly. And, and, you know, if you think about starting small, you know, even starting an R and D is probably too big. Um, so, digital product model. Great place, um, whether you call it a digital twin or not, and there's lots of different definitions of, you know, and people will get in a holy war with you about what it, what is or what isn't one. I like the term, I uh, can go with it. Yeah, I, you know, I like it. You know, I, my joke is if you ask something, you know, three people what the definition of a digital twin is, you'll get five definitions, you know. <laughs> um, but so using that as a, as, a, as a sort of a starting point, let's get your digital twin down. Let's figure out how can you get all of your designers, all of your engineers, working on one cohesive model of the product. And you know, the challenge, of course, in that is where you're going to put that model, where you're going to put that cohesive model, and that's where you start to introduce platform. And the key to me is, as you're starting small, know what that big picture is, and start enabling those little pieces in something that's going to be able to support the broader picture over time. So digital model is a great, uh, you know, digital twin is a great place to start. Um, analytics is a great, you, you brought up analytics. That's a great place to start because companies have so much data now, um, particularly, you know, particularly data coming off the manufacturing line. And now we're starting to get data back from products, you know, via IOT. You know, analytics is another great place to really start that may find you those insights that pay for the rest of it, right? Yeah, and it was, it was fun. So I got to interview George Blankenship who gave the keynote. He's a, you know, an executive that worked at Apple and Tesla, and, and we talked about one other thing. Well, actually, it was kind of two, but we talked about like kind of what all the common DNAs were of these companies at right. great innovation. And he also pointed out two other things that were probably fairly worth mentioning that, you know, us as, as, as analysts, sometimes we want to talk about tech. Right. But he really hit home experience and culture. Yeah. And so we're here at 3D Experience, right? right. So it is only relevant, and I'll kind of finish you off with one last question okay. here, but is that how much do you guide believe that maybe companies are kind of missing the mark altogether when they kind of start their digitalization or digital transformation with the technology rather than thinking about the experience they want to create? And you know, yeah. is, is that maybe a thinking that we guys like us need to be more accountable for sharing in the market that they need to go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, my, my background comes from management consulting, so I've sort of got a, you know, tattoo of people, process, and technology. Um, I don't really, but I'm going to get one. I keep saying I'm going to get one. Um, you know, people, process, and technology to me is the key, right? And so if you're, if you're not starting with the, the people side of things and you're not understanding what's the strategy, how are we going to change the experience for our customers? How are we going to... Um, do something that is really fundamentally different and one that is tied to a business benefit, right? Not just a cohesive digital twin, a cohesive digital twin because that means I can reuse that and get more products to market faster to beat that competitor that always beats me to the market. Start with that, figure out a strategy, how are we going to do that from a people perspective, then start to figure out, all right, how do we, how do we support that underneath? So to me, it's, to me, it's strategy, people, process, and then the technology is the enabler. Um, now, having said that, it's a pretty important enabler, right? And, and that's where a lot, of people, a lot of people fail there too, so. I think a lot of times it's just so easy to get, for lack of better terminology, geeked out about how cool tech is, but then we don't realize, you know, you hear statistics like 
fifty percent of IT projects fail. Right. Fifty percent of IT and technology that's procured is not bad or fundamentally flawed. Right. It's going into cultures, environments that either don't understand what they want to do, they don't believe in it, they're not invested in it, they don't have the right people and processes and and, and planning yeah. to actually succeed. So. I just thought what you you know what you just said and what George said was so relevant that yeah. sometimes I think we'd want to start with tech, but maybe what we really want to start with is looking inside at the experience and the culture, yeah. and then bringing that outward and then like you said enabling it all with yeah. technology. So if I can throw one more thing in, yeah, uh, you course. probably have your your sort of red flags or like cautionary moments when you walk into a new uh, a new company that you're advising. Uh, one of mine is when you ask somebody you know tell me about your project plan. And they go through all of the, you know, the details of what they're going to do, and they say, and then our goal is we're going to go live on whatever November first, you know, and you're like, so your goal for this project is to go live, like, yep, I'm like, so I want you to think back, what was the goal that got this project funded? What was the goal that got this whole thing started? And I'm guessing it wasn't pushing software live, whether it was a platform, whether it was something else, somebody somewhere wanted to improve something in the business that they believe is going to be worth all of this effort and time. And if you spend all of your time, effort, and energy, and all you want to do is push the button and say, yay, live. the software's live, <laughs> you're fundamentally missing it. So I, I agree with you 100%. Yeah, no, I think that's great. I actually think maybe even taking it one, one step further and saying that there is really no start and end anymore to transformative projects. But like Absolutely. there really isn't a go live date. Like, we're in the age of everything's in beta always, yeah, you yeah. know. And I think <laughs> companies that sort of say, "Well, this is the, this is the uh, market-ready product." Well, all the best companies in the world are living in beta, right? You talk right. about, you know, the Amazons, Teslas, you know, these companies are constantly exactly. in beta. They just upgrade the software, upgrade the software, upgrade the software, you know. Yeah. And, and I think we kind of need to think of our businesses that way. And if we yeah. do, a lot of what you're saying about, you know, driving a platform and real innovation will happen. So, yeah. Jim Brown, thank you so much yeah, for your you. time today. It. Yeah, it was a lot of fun.